as I explained in my sandboxing or railroading video, railroading in and of itself is not a bad thing, uh, but it's a powerful tool in your GM inventory that if used right can lead uh, to amazing adventures. But it is also a tool that is uh, kind of hard to use. So with this video I hope I can give you some pointers on how to do railroading right. Most important in railroading is that you give your players the illusion of choice. They must think that their choices are determining the progress of the adventure, when in reality they're running like rats through a maze of your design. To create this illusion you should know your players and your player characters motivations so you can use these motivations and build them into your plot. Let me give you an example. You want your players to go into your dungeon to defeat the evil necromancer and save the village and standard so far. Maybe they get this quest from a village elder and are promised a few gold as a reward and most of the time that will work and your players will get to the dungeon sooner or later. Or you could use your character's backstory. Uh, maybe the village is the village one of your player characters grew up in and the necromancer is threatening the village and his family. Maybe the necromancer has kidnapped a character's a younger sibling, maybe a character's love interest, and is planning to use them as a living sacrifice to power his evil world-ending spell. Now the players should be motivated to get into that dungeon and stop that evil necromancer quickly. What I do is I take note of my player character's motivations and backstory and I use that as inspiration to actually write my adventures. That is why I personally struggle with mastering, with leading pre-written, broad adventures because they can't really take your specific player and character group into account when writing the adventure. So it always comes a bit of a bit generic. For example, you have a Cthulhu adventure. And they all start with an old acquaintance of your characters has a problem. And then when they arrive, they find he is mysteriously vanished or murdered or whatever. But how many uh, acquaintances all over the world does a character really have? But if I use uh, an acquaintance that is already in the character's backstory and have them ask the characters for help, that is much more personal, much more motivating. At least I think so. To keep your players wandering off your pre-planned route in a random direction or maybe spend a week in town smithing, making new equipment, brewing potions, you can use time pressure. If the enemies are actively working against them, if they maybe um, uh, doing a ritual to open the Ark of Trottle to unleash a horde of demons into the world. Then the players will uh, hurry up and take the shortest and straightest pass to stop the evildoer from opening that portal. There are also some techniques, some tricks you can use to make your railroading less obvious. You could have your players explore your plot locations in any order they want. For example, if you are running an uh, investigation, a murder investigation, 
you leave them a couple of clues at the crime site and which clues the players want to follow is uh, of their choice. So they can follow these leads, these clues in any order they want and eventually they will have followed most of them, maybe all of them, before they get to the big finale and solve the case. You can be flexible with your NPC encounters and locations on when and where you use them. Maybe if you need your characters to visit a certain place, just put that place where your player characters are going anywhere. If they need to meet a certain NPC to advance your plot, just place that NPC in the location your player characters are visiting. The worst thing you can do is have your adventure depends on the characters to meet a certain NPC in a certain place at a certain time. You should really be flexible about that. You can use small sandboxes connected by an otherwise railroaded plot. For example, you could have your characters uh, get into a castle to get an item in there. Now, you could plan that they have to sneak in through the sewers and prepare the sewers as a small dungeon and prepare all the encounters and the roads. Or you could just prepare the castle and the NPCs they might encounter in the castle and then let the players come up with a way to get inside. Maybe uh, there is a uh, masked ball and the players try to get an invitation, maybe fortune invitation and get some ball gowns and dresses and sneak in as guests. Or maybe they disguise themselves as servants and try to sneak in through the back door. Not planning how your PCs should solve a problem not only lets them uh, use more creative problem solving, but you also don't have to come up with a solution yourself, which makes preparing the game a bit less work. If everything fails and your PCs still wander off your prepared adventure path, be open with them, tell them they did so. That is way better than trying to force them back on track through in-game means. Forcing your players in-game will only cause frustration for both your players and yourself. If even after telling your players that they are wandering off course, they still don't want to follow your plot, it's okay. Ask them what they actually want to do and then ask them to take a break, maybe pick up the adventure next session so you have time to prepare the adventure your players actually want to go on. If you're good with uh, handling player motivation and character motivation, that should almost never happen though, so don't worry too much about it. That's what I have to say on the matter. What are your best tricks, your best advice to keep your players on track and keep them motivated? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks and goodbye.